Hello and welcome back to Friday Art, or welcome if you are new. My name is Kate Field, I'm a teacher and artist, and uh, this is part two, <laughs> part two of Creative Collage. So if you haven't checked out part one, then you need to go back and do that. So I release content now every Friday, a new lesson, a new tutorial, and I really hope that you can join in and create some amazing art for yourself. So perhaps you'd like to like and subscribe and all of that kind of stuff. And let's get going. So I've collected all of the collage papers that I created earlier from part one and what we're going to do now is to create some tiny little collage pieces and I've um, divided up my page into squares so whatever paper you're working on um, it doesn't really matter these are just experiments again I like to work in a sketchbook but I do advise that you divide the page into squares and I'm going to use my neutral pieces, my scissors, and I'm going to just sort of measure very loosely because each of these pieces is going to be, they're going to be contained. And I might actually make that one a little bit thinner as we start to sort of put together some ideas. Now this was one of the painted sheets that I did and I really like this contrast between the, the neutral and that one and I might just sort of, so I'm just playing around with some shapes thinking about how it goes. Um, I've got a whole load of load of things here. I've got that circle as well, so I might use that one as well. So this is what we're going to do first of all. And this really is about play and I love it. I love it so much because it gives us that um, that freedom. There are there's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. Yeah, I do like that. I'm gonna pop that one there. So I'm just going to get my glue stick and we're going to stick them down. So I've completed all nine of the squares. I've still got um, quite a few bits left over. I have really enjoyed doing it. I put on some music and then I listened to a story and I got lost in my own world. And that's one of the absolute joys of creating art, isn't it? It really is. OK, so you should have completed all of the squares on your page and now we're going to move on to the next step. So I've got lots of bits and pieces here that are left over and I'm going to have a clean page in my sketchbook and I'm going to just create a freehand square. You can do it with a ruler if you want to but this one I'm just going to have this freehand for the moment. And then thinking about colour and shapes and the compositions that I did in the previous study, I'm going to create a more minimalistic effect with these pieces. And so I'm going to take, I really love this, this one. I'm going to cut it. We've got this. I love that circle with those, uh, the, the colourful magazine pieces. And so I'm just going to sort of play around with, with the shapes. And I might sort of cut up a few more and, and see where they might go. Ooh, so it is very much a, a you sort of putting together some thoughts, some ideas. Sometimes it's quite nice to just line everything up. 
and see what that looks like. And the idea is to have more space around the shapes. So I'm going to play with this for a little while and you do that as well. And then when you've decided on this composition, you're going to stick it down and then we move on to the next step. I've uh, put together a few of my favourite pieces. I've cut some very thinly. I've got my circles from the magazines that we did earlier. And I am going to leave it as that. One of the things about collage is that it can really, really help you get to grips with the concepts of composition and balance and harmony and what works well, whether that's the shapes on the page or whether it's colour. And this is why I love teaching collage so much and I use it a lot. And when I was teaching A-level and um, foundation degree level, I got my students to do this all the time to really get them to focus on composition and stressing the importance of it. Because the things that you learn through these sorts of exercises and tasks are going to help you whatever art you end up doing or whatever art you want to explore and go into. So I hope you're, you're enjoying this. Perhaps you'd like to give me a like. That would be nice. I've had some lovely comments. Thank you so much for taking time to, to write a comment. It really does help because um, this is a new channel and so I'm still trying things out really. So it's lovely, really lovely to get um, the feedback. Thank you so much for your kindness. So this will be the final exercise and I'm going to be using larger pieces to create a background um, using my sheet music and then this is a, a book that I again found that was being thrown away um, and it's just perfect. These sort of directories, dictionaries, things like that are, are so good because the paper is really thin so it's perfect for um, what I want to do. I'm just going to be sticking those down. I also like the cream colour. Um, I think it's quite nice. It's a, a different contrast to the to the white. So I've stuck that on. And although I do love that um, creamy colour, the, the black is just too much. So I'm going to use some gesso. You could use white acrylic. That would work really well. And I've mixed my gesso with some water so it's very very watery because that that will work better and I'm just going to apply apply it with um, a soft brush just to kind of what it's going to give it like a wash um, to the surface just to take a little bit of that black of the um, of the type um, face and this is going to be my background now you don't have to do this your background is your background so by now I'm hoping with all of those uh, exercises and tasks and projects that you've been doing you've got an idea you could use newspaper um, give it have something that's got a little bit of contrast to the white background so ju just a, just a little bit there so you can say i'm just just giving this a bit bit a uh, bit of a contrast here if you really like the cream you could stain it with coffee or tea or something like that and in another lesson a future lesson i'm going to be showing how we can use the things that are in our kitchen to create really interesting stains and pigments um, to create some very exciting work but uh, that's me going off on another tangent <laughs> but in the meantime we're going to leave that to dry so that's all dry now just took took a, a few minutes to dry and I'm now using some of this rice paper and you could use tissue paper and again what I'm doing is creating um, some texture Still as the background. Now, can you see? Let me just whoop, zoom in on that one. That with the with the tissue paper, and especially when it gets wet, you'll be able to see.
some of those um some of those notes oh, just, oh, this is all gonna be weird right here we go <laughs> we're going to put uh, some strips of this just across the page now you could use pva glue you could use the glue stick white glue elmer's glue any, anything like that really as we're going to just layer in this uh, final experimental piece okay. and as always as we're playing with this i'm hoping that ideas are coming into your head of the sort of things that you are going to do i would love to hear what, what you get up to that would just be so fascinating so i've stuck those on and now once again i'm putting together some thoughts and ideas using all of these lovely collage papers I put a few few around in the, so sort of a slightly different way to what I had done previous. Oh, I still quite like that. Not, no, I may put that one in. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> let's let's continue playing for a little while longer. I've got some of these more, some of the sort of more neutral ones that we did earlier. I'm quite liking those, liking those very much. And with the odd bit of the, the magazine as well. So I'm going to, to put together a few pieces. I've put uh, the rest of my shapes on this page now. I'm really pressing it down. I usually just get a, get a sheet of paper and make sure that everything is really flat because what we're going to do now is some stenciling and some paint over the top of it. So I'm going to be using some bright fluorescent pink and white. And with stenciling, the trick is always to use very little. So I've got a huge blob of white here because I'm using that for something else. Um, it's just using a, a little brush here. It's very, very soft stencil brush but you can use it like a sponge that would work as well and um, this is just white Can you see that let's just put that there just making this sort of um dry brush technique otherwise the stencils won't really come out very well let's just lift that and you can have have this effect so this is a kind of lots of different um different bits so i'm going to just do some dabs here because i don't want it to be perfect <laughs> absolutely don't want that i want it to look a little bit messy because that is kind of my my purpose on this let's just add a little bit more on that i am going to be doing um a tutorial on stenciling. I'm going to add a bit of pink now. So I think it is it's quite underrated seen as um you know decorative art and uh, I love decorative art. <laughs> it's nothing nothing wrong with that at all. Goodness, can you imagine what the world would be like if we didn't have decorative art? It'd be awful. I love it. Love decorative art. Uh, but uh, it means that um some people can get a bit snobby about it, about using stencils. I just find them really exciting, create interesting textures. And I'm just sort of building these up. Now, where's my other one? Okay, I'm going to have these ones that look a little bit like bubbles. Up on there. Again, the, the paint is very dry. I'm not adding any water. There's no water at all. 
putting oh, that's too, too much. And I quite like the idea of using a colour like bright neon pink with other sort of grungy type um, colours. I like that juxtaposition. I think it makes things quite exciting and people aren't quite sure what's going to happen. Oh, I'm liking that. I'm liking that very much. And then where's my other one? Right, and this one is more uniform. So the colours are much, much more uniform. I'm going to do very pale um, pink on this one. And I'm just going to do a few down the bottom here. Now, I always use my other hand to hold it down, but you could use masking tape or some paper clips. That would work as well. And I always do this sort of work standing up find I get more energy if I'm standing up. Oh yes, I'm liking that. You see those, those little um, pink circles. I'm liking that very much. Why? We are very, very near the end now. So the final thing I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to use an acrylic marker pen, or you could use a Sharpie. And I'm just going to put in some marks on the top. Again, creating some more texture. I quite like using different sorts of mark making techniques in the, in the same piece. And I think that I just put a few, a few in here. I put a black border around the edge. I really hope that this has inspired you to try out new things with collage. It's very much about playing and putting some ideas together and seeing where, where they might go, where they might take you. Thank you so much for for watching and I I hope you've in, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. It's been quite a long one, hasn't it, with these two parts. So uh thank you for making it through to the end. <laughs> so before you go, let's have a reminder of all the things that you can do or some of the things you can do using collage. These are the uh these are the ones that we did earlier with the uh magazines and the, the prints. This is one that I was just playing with some leftover paper actually. And this one we're using text and typography. This one I used backgrounds and then did the drawing over the top. And then we had a look at a more minimalistic piece, which I think I'm going to do some more like this because I rather like it. And then finally, we have this one here. I really hope you've enjoyed this two-part creative collage art class. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you're doing. I just absolutely love to, to hear from you. Thank you for all of the comments that people have written so far. It's really uplifting and I'm very very grateful because this is a new channel and uh, and I am new to this whole YouTube lesson thing <laughs> and so it's just so nice to have such a lovely positive community out there in the world of art and design. Thank you so much and I really hope to see you next time. Bye bye.